my precious young friends, I'm so glad to share with you a few thoughts uh, on one of the most important uh, manifestations of our uh, being, uh, namely how you respond or react to a certain situation. There is a godly strategy and there is a fleshly uh, uh, strategy uh, in, in answering or reacting or uh, responding to a situation. So we are going to uh, contrast them and then uh, choose what is good for us. What happens when you hear somebody spoke evil of you? And you know it's not true. By the grace of God, there are a few things to be taken into consideration before any kind of reaction or kind of response. Number one, when I feel I am hurt by words that were said about me or by the way I am seen or perceived by those around me in the way I am judged or interpreted or misinterpreted, the very first step I need to take, it's not reacting to what I hear or what I see in what I hear. No, it's not. The very first reaction, uh, exactly like a compass going to north, my mind needs to go to the Lord, first of all, before any other kind of breathing uh, of our lungs or mind. In a twinkling of an eye, we need to be in the presence of the Lord. And uh, number one, when you hear some evil things that were spoken about you, you are coming before the Lord and asking him, Lord, is it uh, written in your book too? Is this true what these people say? It's not easy. Do you remember when David was cursed by Shimea? It was a man. Um, they, they said he was a man uh, of look, look, looking for this kind of, of, of trouble and life to live. That man, uh, that man was talking uh, and cursing David with extremely provocative words. And uh, some of the officers in the army, they wanted to go and execute him on spot. But David said, don't do that. Let me talk with God. Maybe uh, you understand the importance of talking to God first. And then he talked with God and he was comforted in his heart that the words that man said, they were not true. Jesus said, don't just suffer, don't just resist, rejoice when they are not true. That's number one move. Uh, number two, the, uh, move, uh, the second move that you have to do in a situation like this, number two. We find this in Acts of Apostles, uh, chapter 22. The Lord informs Paul, the apostle, that uh, he has to go out quickly out of Jerusalem because People, like uh, uh, Acts 22, 18, leave Jerusalem immediately because the people here will not accept your testimony about me. So God didn't try to force the situation. God took um, certain measures in the context that was there. And the context was one of rejecting the testimony of Paul. Um, then what would be his reaction? He would be, he would be indignant toward those people. He would curse them back and he would uh, say words. Uh, no, uh, uh, verse 20, verse 19, Acts chapter, Lord, these people know that I went from one synagogue to another to imprison and beat those who believe in you. So my past is not favorable to my testimony. People know me. I lost my credit because I persecuted the church. So I'm conscient in my heart. Uh, in one occasion, he would tell to a very violent mob. He said, I understand you very well because I did the same kind of things. So after coming in the presence of the Lord, second step is to review your past. Do you remember doing the same kind of things or not? Ecclesiastes chapter 
21, uh, chapter 7, verses 21 and 22. Do not pay attention to every word. Uh, uh, to pay attention it has the meaning of do not be indignant, do not react. Do not pay attention to every word people say. Don't. Don't try to react to what people say. Consult God first and then consult your own heart. Second, um, you know in your heart that many times you yourself have cursed others. You know very well this. No, that's, um, that's very safe. It's a very safe walk. It's a very safe way to react or respond in a difficult situation. Number one, come in the presence of God and confront your conscience with what is spoken about you. And then uh, be glad if it is not true. Jesus said, rejoice. Second, uh, consult your own conscience, your own past. Did you ever commit the same kind of sins? Okay, then you have on you the same measure of guilt they have now. You, they are not worse or lower than you. You are at the same level with them. And you tell them, I remember very well doing the same kind of things as Paul said. So I have no reason to accuse you. Jesus said, before reacting to different kind of bad words or bad situation or injustice, before reacting to that, uh, check on your own eye before trying to, to pull out the beam from the eye of your neighbor, your friend. Oh, that guy is that, that, that. No, first of all, uh, look uh, in your own eye. Look your own face in the mirror and then you will see there that uh, what is in your eye compared with what is in his or her eye is like a speck of dust with a beam. That's a difference. That's a huge physical difference. And Jesus says that it is important. You are doing a good work trying to correct your neighbor. But first of all, clean your own eyes. Clean your own act. Clean your own past with God. Not It's impossible, humanly speaking, or with people. But you can do that with God. After cleaning your past and confessing it and uh, taking advice with the Lord, then you can treat your neighbor. It's very good that you are interested and you react to the fact that your neighbor has something in his eye and you help him clean his eyes his eye in order to see yeah that's very good from from your from you but uh talking or accusing others of things that you are guilty you yourself uh that's not productive it's literally sabotaging your spiritual growth by the grace of God, every single opportunity when we are confronted with negative things of a kind or another, they are opportunities to grow in grace. If you face a trial like this in the spiritual dignity of Christ, then you grow in faith. You grow in the character of Christ. If you react to a, a situation like that and you use the same means, they curse you, you curse them. They speak against you, you speak against them, they gossip, you gossip. Then you are going to go way lower than them because on one, one hand, you are practicing those kind of sins that are bringing you to that low level. And second, you are ignoring the voice of your own conscience that tells you you are guilty of the same kind of sins. Don't, don't accuse or blame or judge another person when you know very well in your heart that your own situation could be worse than that. It is extremely important. I practice and I was in both situations. I fell and I failed into answering uh, Christ-like in a situation like this. Other times I tried, and by the grace of God, I succeeded answering in a way that uh, we got the advice from the Lord. The Bible says that in your confrontation with your neighbor, you have to keep one thing in mind. 
and one only, namely, that God will give this person repentance. You can bring proof to a person that is not right or true what he says, but you cannot bring repentance. Repentance comes only from God. So you can and you must pray in hope that only God will open the eyes of the other person to see you in the, in the true light of your life and to see the truth as it is in Jesus. Only God can give this kind of repentance. Second, you will repent yourself for mistakes that you see in your neighbor. So instead of becoming indignant and reacting negatively, you literally build up a bridge between that person and Christ. And then you will watch with satisfaction the moment of repentance in the life of that person. This is the most beautiful way of living among people. We are going to meet trials and tribulations, said Jesus. This, this is somehow natural. The main point is how are we going to respond to this kind of situation. May um, God listen to our, uh, and, uh, and answer our prayer that I would like to offer together with you. Precious Lord, help us always to keep in mind the answer of Christ in a, situ in a similar situation. Help us to step in his steps and more than anything else, help us never to turn or to return evil with evil. Help us always um, answer back with good to what is bad with the hope and trust that you will give the gift of repentance to our friends, family, neighbors, and primarily to ourselves. In Jesus' name. Amen.